Hi everyone, my name is uh, Thomas Behn. I work as a software developer for Mindberg and uh, I'm the main developer and maintainer of PTP Trackhound uh, version 2 here in Mindberg. Um, PTP Trackhound is a software which allows you to, to easily uh, record, visualize and analyze um, PTP network traffic. And it's available for free download from ptptrackhound.com. You can use it on Windows, Mac OS or Linux, whatever uh, um, operating system you prefer. So once you've downloaded PTP Trackhound uh, from ptptrackhound.com and followed the instructions on how to install and set it up, uh, you can connect to the servers from uh, your browser, from localhost uh, in the free version and from remote computers in one of the uh, paid license options. So now I want to show you the main features of PTP Trackhound, how to use them and uh, how to show them in the web UI. So once you've um, connected to the service via your browser, the default credentials to log in are username, track count and password groups. And as soon as you've logged in, you will get to the uh, start page, which gives you an instant overview of the traffic, the scopes and everything that has been detected by PTP track count. Uh, in this case, we have not selected a capture interface yet, so we have to first um, adapt the settings of PTP track count to capture on one of the local network interfaces. We are choosing this ENP202S0 uh, in this case. Uh, I'd simply activate the checkbox here and then apply the settings. And as soon as the settings have been applied, you will see that now we see uh, traffic coming in and also that first scopes and devices have been detected by PTP Trackout. So back to the start page, you can see that, uh, yeah, PTP Trackout already captures uh, some traffic. There's a number of total packets that have been received and also the most recent announce messages that have been received. It gives you an overview uh, over the vendors that uh, have been detected by PTP Trackout. In this case, that's a Mindberg device and also a couple of receiver clocks from Oregano. Um, then you get an overview over recent events that have occurred and also about the uh, memory that's being used by PTP Trackhound. The traffic page gives you an instant overview of all the PTP packets that have been received. Um, this is basically just like Wireshark, so you can see that all the incoming PTP packets uh, are listed here. And you can also uh, stop the auto scrolling and have a look into the PTP packets. For example, this is an announce message. You can um, step through the different uh, packet headers which uh, are included in the packet. So Ethernet 2, IPv4, UDP, uh, PTP header and uh, also the announce part of the message. So here you can see, for example, the PTP quality parameters that have been uh, transmitted by the PTP clock. Um, and you can also have a look at the raw data of the PTP packets, uh, just like in Wiresha. Um, in addition to that, you get a lot of statistics about the PTP traffic that's been recorded. So you can see a total number of PTP packets here, um, the number of soon follow-up announced messages per second, and yeah, a lot of um, uh, statistics in addition to that. In the scopes view, you get an uh, instant overview uh, of all PTP devices that have been detected. In this case, we have one Grandmaster clock uh, from Mindberg, um, which is uh, hostname PSX210 Tiger in this case. And we have a couple of receiver clocks from Oregano uh, using the SYN1588 NIC uh, to connect to this uh, Mindberg Grandmaster. In the devices, uh, page you get another overview of the network so this is basically just a different kind of visualization for the same thing and then we have the analysis view which uh, I will show you later so now let's get get a little bit deeper into the features of PTP track count um, apart from the basic capturing uh, and analysis of PTP traffic so we now want to send PTP management messages to all our uh, devices in the network. So we just check this um, checkbox here and um, set the interval to 15 seconds. So every 15 seconds we will send um, management messages to all the devices in the network. 
And as soon as we do that, you will see that the time receivers in the network will report their offset. So in this case, on the scopes view, you can see that uh, the three time receivers we have report their own offsets, which are um, yeah within uh, tens of nanoseconds, so or one to five nanoseconds. And um, yeah, that's also that's already an indication on how good the synchronization quality in the network is. As a second option, you can also enable capture time offsets. That's a feature we introduced with PTP TrackCount version 2.0.5. Uh, in this, um, with this feature, you can actually measure the offset of the current time transmitter compared to your local clock. So, um, of course, you need to make sure that your clock is synchronized. So, in this case. Uh, we, we are using PTP for Linux to synchronize the hardware timestamper we're using for capture time offsets. And we now enable capture time offsets and we also enable hardware timestamps to be introduced in the um, captured packets. Uh, once applied, we will now see that in the scopes view, you see a, an offset for the current grandmaster, which is around 140 nanoseconds. Um, and uh, in brackets you see that this is the CTO, the capture time offset. As a third option for monitoring or measurement, you can enable MedSync Monitor, which is a specific, uh, a special protocol that has been developed by Mindberg. Um, it's also uh, known as reverse PTP. So in this case, PTP track count actually sends a PTP delay request packet, uh, including a special TLV, and um, all the nodes that support NetSync Monitor will respond with a PTP delay response sync message and a follow-up message. As soon as we've enabled NetSync Monitor, you will see that in the scopes view, the reported offsets, which are um, all identified by the MGMT in brackets, uh, will be replaced by um, another measurement which is named NSM. So that stands for NetSim Monitor. And now we have uh, real measurements between the time receivers we have in our network and the local clock. So now you can see that all clocks uh, in our PTP network are within a couple of tens of nanoseconds. So now that we've set up uh, management messages, CTO and NetSync Monitor, we will um, see results in the analysis view. You can see that for all the devices we have in our, um, in our environment, there are results for all kinds of uh, different measurements reported, which means um, reported from the management messages, measured, which means NetSync Monitor and CTO. So, for example, we can show a graph of the capture time offsets that have been measured within the last minutes. And yeah, we can see that it um, flows between 250 and 0 nanoseconds somewhere in that range. The same is true for uh, the measured offsets. So, this is um, that's a monitor. Uh, the measured offsets for all three time receivers are pretty equal. So, all the time receivers seem to have pretty much the same offset compared to our local clock. And we can also have a look at the reported offsets from all time receivers. And these are, of course, pretty low because that's the job uh, of the time receiver to uh, to hold the, the offset to the grandmaster on the small. All the values shown here in the web interface, of course, can also be um, constantly monitored via SNMP or the integrated REST API so that you can integrate PDP track on into your uh, existing monitoring solution you have um, already set up. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention and we will show you additional features of PTP track on in the next videos. Thanks a lot and bye bye.